Oh boy, what are we gonna talk about next? Well, take a look at this picture. That kind of excites me because I think lightning's cool. Um, but we are gonna talk a lot about energy and all the different forms of energy. But before we get to energy, we gotta talk about a very simple term that you're gonna hear so frequently in the next, who knows, five years, six years. Um, you're gonna hear it a ton through high school. And that is matter. Matter, okay, when you look at this diagram right here, anything that takes up space displays the property of mass or inertia, which we've kind of talked about, but matter is anything that takes up space. Look around, you got matter everywhere, okay? Everything that we kind of experience, um, whether you realize it or not, is made up of matter. Matter is the substance of the universe, yes! Look at that cool picture. I'm kind of fascinated by the universe. but. Most importantly, especially in this unit we're talking about, energy is what moves matter, okay? We don't often think of energy as moving anything, but truly, energy is moving matter. So it's kind of cool to think of it that way. So I want you guys to keep that in mind. When we talk about energy, we always are really referring to matter as well and the movement of it. Energy is movement. We don't think about that, but it's very true. So energy is endless, or is it? Look around you, wherever you're sitting, you might be in the kitchen, you might be in your room, you might be in the family room, who knows. I want you to look around. Take a couple seconds to just observe what kind of energies do you see going on? Whether it's light energy, maybe it's really cold and you hear the heater. Maybe you have a pet. Right now I'm looking at my dog and he keeps bugging me to throw the ball. The energy that he has. Okay, um, lots of other things going on. Lots of different types of energy. I want you guys to realize energy isn't necessarily endless, okay? That would be an amazing breakthrough, right, if energy was endless. But we come up with ways that, that basically house energy and we use it for other things. And you guys are going to get to know there are some laws of energy, the conservation of energy. Energy is never created or destroyed. It's just transformed from one type of energy to another. So, you know, maybe one type of energy all of a sudden can transform into a different type of energy. Sometimes, you know, light energy. Light energy can be transformed into some, you know, heat energy. Or some of that energy is lost as heat. So I don't want you guys to think that, you know, energy is endless and that we can just continue to create more. Because we don't create energy. It's stored, it's formed in different, you know, different ways. So that sometimes we can access it in different ways. Anyways, there's a, a whole long conversation behind that. But think about energy. Because it's kind of, you know, fascinating when you think about all the things around you that basically, you know, emit energy, have energy, cause movement and matter and so forth. Okay, moving on. So the types of energies we're going to talk about today. Sound. Sound is a form of energy producing vibrations, okay? And we don't think of that, again, when we hear people talk and we listen to music, we don't think of that as vibrations. But if you ever have put your hand on a speaker, you know, maybe a really large speaker, you feel that vibration. Well, that's what sound is. It's a vibrating kind of a wave that we're going to talk about. So sound waves transmit energy of a vibrating object through matter, okay? Obviously, if you're listening to music, it's transmitting through some gases because our, you know, what we breathe, our atmosphere is made of gases. But sound also is transmitted through many different mediums, solids, liquids, and gases. Something that you guys might have not realized is that sound is actually transmitted much easier through solids, okay? When you think of what a solid looks like, all of these molecules are packed really tightly, okay? One next to the other, kind of butted up against. That's why they don't move. It's a solid because they're all right there. But they still have movement. And as that sound passes through them, it has more matter to kind of bounce that wave off of. And it transmits that, that wave much easier than through a, a liquid or a gas, okay? So even though we can hear people as we're talking, you'd be amazed, okay? So I think even in your lesson, it talks about scratching an, a surface of something, um, I want to say it's a ruler. You can scratch the end, hold the ruler out pretty far from your ear, and put one end here and one end over here, and you scratch that one end, and it's like it's right in your ear, because that solid will transmit that sound wave much easier than any other medium, okay? So, obviously, we an answered this question, which sound, or which does it sound travel faster through? Well, solid. 
and think again of how those solids are made up versus liquids and, and gases. Those molecules are really tightly packed. A, a liquid, you have the molecules that are kind of moving like this, and a gas, they're all over the place. So therefore, the sound wave has a hard time transmitting as easily through a gas, okay? All right, so sound waves are longitudinal waves. So if you guys have ever played around with a slinky, you know that you could whip the slinky up and down like that. That creates a different type of wave. We call that a transverse wave. But sound waves, if you hold the slinky and you have somebody else hold it, and one person just pushes the end of it, and it causes this compression, and it'll move in one direction, and then it'll hit that person and move in the other direction, that's a longitudinal wave, like an inchworm, because it kind of compresses and expands and compresses and expands. That's what a sound wave looks like, okay? The movement of that energy is parallel to that, that wave. So basically the energy is moving this direction and so is that um, wave, okay? So talking about sound waves and how we hear, I think it's pretty fascinating. I love the human body. So when I talk about how we actually hear and these vibrations, so basically you have these sound waves coming in here, obviously, and we have these large ears out here to kind of funnel that, um, those waves. And it funnels it into this outer ear. This is your, you have three parts of your ear. You have the outer ear, you have the middle ear, and you have the inner ear, okay? The outer ear stops right at this tympanic membrane or the eardrum, okay? Those vibrations, the sound waves go through this outer ear and they cause the eardrum to vibrate, okay? And once it vibrates, you have these three teeny tiny bones, the smallest bones in your body. That's in your middle ear, the incus malleus and stapes. And those ears, or those ears, those um, bones will start to vibrate themselves. They'll vibrate, and the next one will vibrate, and then the last one will vibrate. And what happens is this last bone kind of butts up against to um, the inner ear, okay, what we call the cochlea and the semicircle canals and all of the inner workings of the inner ear. And the vibration is then sent through where there are these, um, there's a, a fluid with all of these teeny tiny microscopic little hairs. With those hairs, transmits nerve impulses. So if those hairs move, then all of a sudden this nerve impulse is transmitted through the cochlear nerve to the brain, and the brain interprets what that sound is. Kind of hard to believe, because you're like, wow, that's so crazy. But that's how our ears work, all through those vibrations of the sound waves, okay? You guys will read a little bit more about that in your lesson, so make sure you're reading and taking notes. All right, now on to light, okay? So light is another type of energy, okay? Again, there are to so many types of energies out there. But basically, light moves in waves as well, okay? Not through a medium, though. That's the difference. So we have sound waves that require a medium. If you had a sound wave in a vacuum, you wouldn't be able to hear it because it needs matter. But light does not. And actually, it would be a bad thing if, if basically, you know, we could not see light if there wasn't a medium because... Think of the light transmitted from the sun to where we are right now. There are times where obviously there's no medium and you wouldn't be able to see that. So light can travel, but doesn't need a medium, okay? Therefore, it can move through all mediums, but also can be basically be lacking medium, or basically lacking um, matter to travel through. But it'll travel at different speeds depending on what medium it's going through. So it's kind of cool to think about that. That's why there's a lot of different terms when we talk about refraction and reflection and the um, you know things that we see based on what mediums it is the light is um, being transmitted through. So when we talk about reflection, I think reflection is a really cool concept because sometimes we don't get why we see certain colors. So like right behind my computer is this lovely plant I have and I see that it's green. And the only reason why I see green is because all of the other colors except green are being absorbed, okay? Where green is being reflected back into my eyes. That is why we see particular colors. So it's not because, oh yeah, it's just, it's a green color. It's because green is being reflected back into our eyes and then we interpret that color. All the other colors are still there, but they're being absorbed. So black where is basically the reason why we see black, like say you turn off the light and it's all black. It's because all of the colors have, are being absorbed and nothing's being reflected back into our, our eyes. On the opposite end, white, all of the colors are being reflected back. That's why we see white. 
kind of a hard concept. I don't expect you guys to totally understand that. It's kind of some abstract thinking, but that is the truth. It's kind of a cool thing to think about. So anyways, it all has to do with the light that's being reflected off of those objects versus the, you know, colors that are basically being absorbed. Now, talking about different, basically different amounts of light being able to be um, kind of transmitted through a medium. And so we talk about transparency. Transparent objects allow light to pass through them instead of reflecting them back. So take, for instance, this lovely pool here. It's so beautiful. You can see to the bottom. Maybe it's an even ocean. That is a transparent object. So all those light waves go directly through like that, kind of like that here. Can't really use my hands for everything, but I'll try. So that's transparency. But when you have a translucent object or material, it only allows a little bit of light to pass through. So you have this object and the light kind of goes every which way as it gets through, but it does get through that material. It's translucent, okay? But it's not transparent, okay? So a little bit of light will pass through and um, you end up looking like this behind the screen where it's translucent. You can see that there's something behind there, there's lights passing through, but you can't get a clear picture. Now the last one is opaque. We're basically, the opaque materials are gonna block all of the light. So if you have this material that's opaque and these light waves are trying to get through, they're gonna be basically bouncing off of here. They're not necessarily gonna be reflecting back, but they will, you know, in actuality. But basically, they're not gonna get through, you're not gonna see anything through that. So that would be like these balloons would be opaque, okay? So, on to some diagrams. Now, I want you guys to take a look at this and we'll, we'll take a look at these at, in class once again. But these are something that you guys have to understand and have to know a little bit about because you've got some assignments um, around these. So basically, if you let's take a look at this one first. If you have a flashlight and you're flashing that light into a mirror, this is what we call the incident ray, okay? The incident ray is what is causing that light. So you have that light and it's now being reflected. So you have the reflected ray. So basically whatever light is coming in, just like down here, this would be the flashlight, the incident ray, and then on a mirror, some reflective surface, it's gonna reflect that exact angle in the reflected ray, okay? Then you have an angle of incident. So basically you have this kind of a perpendicular line to your mirror or your reflective object. So that's that gray line and this is that black line. From that, that perpendicular to your incident ray, you have an angle of incidence. And it will be the exact same as the angle of reflection on the other side. So from the perpendicular to the um, reflected ray, you're gonna have the angle of reflection. So please know these terms a little bit. They're not too difficult when you start looking at it, that you have the light source coming in as the incident ray. You have this reflective surface right here. It's going to um, bounce back in, in the identical same you know, kind of angle, and it's called the reflective ray. Okay, then you have the angle of reflection here, the angle of incidence here. Okay, a little bit on those. Last one, and we're done. So again, um, here we call this also the perpendicular, we call it the normal as well. You'll hear that as well. So you have the reflected, oh sorry, the incident ray that you see the little arrows. The incident ray is always going to be going towards that reflective surface. The reflected ray is always going to be going away from that surface. The angle of incidence, the angle of reflection, and your reflective surface here. Easy as pie, right? So we'll touch a little bit more on this in our live session. but. Let this stuff sink in a little bit, because when we talk about energy and, and something that's kind of abstract, we don't we we can see a lot of energy, but at the same time we don't think about it. We don't think about seeing it. So keep that in mind. Um, but we'll talk um, a lot more in our live session about this. So see you then.